So in the previous section, I talked about different factors that can uh, lead to obesity. Here, I'm going to talk about how we can just prevent obesity. Before talking about that, let's a bit um, talk about set point theory of weight. It seems like each individual, like each of us, we do have a biological weight that we're going to be born with, and we cannot modify that weight at all at some point. Um, so what does it mean? It means like, for example, I can be biologically, I mean, based on uh, my characteristics and for example, height, uh, my body type and all that, I can be 110 pounds, but my, my brother, he can be, for example, 200 pounds and that's okay. It's, it's not going to be obesity. Um, so we can start from here to just understand how could we just prevent obesity. Uh, another point is about stress and eating. Um, in general, it seems like stress can affect eating habits. For example, whenever you are stressed out, you're probably going to eat a lot, which is going to be my case. But there are like some people out there, whenever they do have a stress, um, they are not eating well. So they're going to skip a meal, a meal because they are just stressed. Um, another point about stress and eating, it just whenever you're eating a lot, you're going to get anxiety as well which is crazy. So there can be a correlation between a stress and eating, but this different based on uh, people's personality. Um, in general, it seems like a stress eating, it is uh, tied to anxiety and depression. Now we're gonna talk about different interventions that can treat obesity. Um, they're gonna be like at least two. Um, it's gonna be dieting always, or, and it's gonna be surgery. There are some people, they do have like extreme obesity, so they have to go for both of them. But like majority of people, they would just choose one of them, like either dieting or surgery. If you would just scroll um, Amazon page, you can just find at least, I mean, the number is just very old, but you can just find at least like 150,000 books about dieting and about obesity. So, and nowadays we're gonna use like websites and like uh, different group chats, Facebook, TikTok, I talked about it a lot, uh, to um, some good suggestions that could just help us to lose some weights. Um, so we already know about dieting. We talked about this a lot. We talked about CBT. I'm gonna talk about this more, but let's talk about surgery uh, for losing weight. Um, there are like several ways for doing surgery, um, but the most common one is just uh, reducing a stomach's capacity to just cut down the food intake. So this way the person would eat less and uh, wouldn't actually feel that much hungry after a point, so they're going to lose weight. Um, however, it is just very radical because it does have a lot of consequences. I guess we heard a lot about people um, dying because of doing this surgery, so it's not that much safe as they are just advertising, but it is just common for curing obesity. And even like your physician or your doctor, they're going to actually suggest you, um, I mean, not you, but just it is good for some people who have like some complicated health problems uh, that make um, that they have to just pay, uh, lose weight uh, because it is necessary necessary for them. So it is just good for them to just um, do this surgery. But in general, it's just very invasive and radical. Um, it seems like the surgery actually. I'm just checking my notes. It seems like the surgery actually can help a lot um, to reduce some mental problems. That is very common uh, in people who are dealing with obesity. So it can be good, but it is radical. Just keep that in your mind. Um, a good way of losing weight that we already talked about this is CBT uh, or cognitive behavioral therapy. It is just very common, especially for people who are not uh, extreme obese. Um, the first point going to be a screening. Your doctor going to do that. Actually, they are actually looking at you like your physical condition, your eating habits and all that. After just seeing that, they would just ask you to do self monitoring in which you're going to understand, for example, your own condition, what, uh, what actually, um, uh, like what time of the day you're going to eat more, um, how you can just reduce that food intake. Uh, your shopping habits and all that, uh, what is in your fridge. Um, so it's going to be like self-monitoring and taking a lot of notes by yourself. Um, 
so um, another one going to be attentional uh, retraining in which you're going to pay attention to your environment to just see what's going on in your environment. So this way you can just um, understand what can again lead to eating more or less. A stimulus controlling and controlling eating, it's going to be okay. You know that whenever you do have anxiety or exam, you're going to eat more unhealthy food. So probably at that point, you have to, like, whenever you know that it is your midpoint, mid, oh my goodness, it is actually, it is very close to semester midpoint. But whenever you know that it is your midterm exam or it is your final exam, it is good to just do meal prep or uh, put a lot of healthy foods in your fridge instead of just having like pizza or like something like that. So this way you can just uh, control your environment and like a stimulus that can lead to eating more. Controlling eating, it is very important. Uh, so this way you just, I mean, if you would just control your fridge, if you would just know about the time, for example, your midterm that can lead to eating more, you can just control your eating habits as well. Then come that that's a good part then comes uh self reinforcement if you did all the work you can just reward yourself you can just go to a movie or just hang out with your friends for a good time um and like controlling self talk or cognitive restructuring is very important we already talked about that for example, instead of just telling yourself all the time, I cannot go on a diet, I just broke my diet again like 10 times before, so what's the point of starting that again? Instead of just doing that, rephrase that kind of self-talk and just put like, I, I for example, I actually, over, I actually overcame a lot of challenges before, so I can just do that again. So just try to just be more positive and kind with yourself. That can help you a lot to just keep going. Then comes exercise. Um, I know it is just very hard for some people to just start exercise, but just see what kind of activity you like. Okay, if you like just walking, you can do that. Or if you have a dog, just take your dog out for a, instead of just five minutes, just do that 10 minutes. If you are a swimmer, you can just swim more or whatever you, you just enjoy that, just do that more. Let's just start from that. Then you can just increase your hours. You can just actually see uh, your progress and just get motivated. Stress management, um, it's very important. I know that in the middle of doing that, you might have anxiety uh, and stress. So just manage that. Just try to be more positive. Use social support, for example, your friends or Facebook groups, or if you have like a group chat with other people like yourself, just try to just put some positive notes about your progress or read others. Um, so this way you're gonna get motivated to just lose some weight. You're gonna see other people who did the same and you're gonna get inspired. Uh, relapse prevention, I mean, I would say relapse is normal up to a point. Um, just be kind with yourself. You might do like one teeny tiny relapse and it is okay, but don't let that to be a letdown. Just try to just keep going and be positive about your CBT treatment. Uh, preventative measures for obesity, per, uh, parental training, it is very important, especially if the whole family, they are obese. I would say that most of the time there is only one person who gonna cook in the house. That one person could be cautious about the whole family's diet and they could just put some um, healthy uh, nutrition for everybody instead of just making everything greasy. Um, changing life size at, at a young age is very important, especially if you are coming from um, an obese genes. Um, so it, it's better to just consider that um, as a point like having an active lifestyle for your kid. It's just necessary. School-based intervention and social engineering strategies, they are very important. I would say children, they're just spending at least eight hours every day at school. So the least like the system can do for them, it just um, cut down the sugar intake and put a lot of good nutrition for them. So this way they can just prevent obesity in um, school age children as well. Uh, same goes for social engineering strategies. The, I mean, we should just see the bigger picture, and that's the whole idea of social engineering. Uh, like policymakers, all of that, they have to just monitor uh, intake in children and food intake in children and just help them just have a better diet.